Is your refrigerator running? What is it running from? Maybe you should run too. Welcome back, Desert Bluffs. It's been a little while since I was last able to speak to you all. Our station has been undergoing a bit of renovation now that management is back. And we actually managed to misplace all of our green broadcast day flags for about a week. I located them last night while I was reassembling one of our antique printing presses. One can only wonder how they got in there. If you've got sharp ears, you may also notice that I sound a little different now. In addition to some renovations to the building, management has also approved some upgrades to my broadcast booth. We will also be rolling out updates to the receivers and speakers around town in the coming weeks. So if you see anyone toting a large suitcase marked hardware, and most certainly not crying, make sure you say hi to one of my new interns. The station has been allotted several interns who have been chosen from the general population of Desert Bluffs. The exact number of interns chosen is not yet known, but if you've been picked, you'll find out soon. The return of the intern program is just one of many fantastic things that have been accomplished recently with the return of management. Employee productivity is up 400% and climbing. Of course, it is important to note that statistic does not take into effect all of the interns we've added to our staff lately, so we may see even further improvements in weeks to come as our new interns settle in. I also figured out how to open any door in the entire station using a flat piece of metal that I picked up off the ground a couple days back. I haven't had a chance to explore every room in the station, but knowing that I can access every available space in the building really does a lot for my peace of mind. Paul has been acting a little bit on edge ever since I bumped into him in one of the old storage rooms but I'm sure that he was just surprised and excited about my accomplishment. Since that incident, I have been finding an increased number of sharp, possibly weapon-like objects just sort of laying around the station unattended, which seems like a major safety hazard. I think Paul may have found an old confiscation bin and must not realize how dangerous it is to have these things just laying around. I'll definitely talk to him about it later. But. For now, some community announcements. The Society for Sufficient Sunlight, recently formed from a community think tank, is drafting up plans to build a large pyramid on the outskirts of town. The purpose of this pyramid is to enable one or more well-trained individuals to hold counsel with the sun and determine what needs to be done in order to keep it from setting every evening. While all of us here in Desert Bluffs are finding ways to get by without a steady source of energy, it would be much more convenient and efficient to have our sun be shining every hour of every day. The Society is seeking architects to assist in drafting blueprints for the pyramid, as well as experienced augurs to interpret portents as the project continues. As of earlier this morning, the Desert Bluffs interim government has announced that several vacancies have opened in their offices. I won't be going into the specifics of each position here, as there are quite a few and they are all specialized enough that it would take some time to explain each of them, but I did put together some quick tips to aid you in the application and interview process. Remember, when you're in an interview, every question is a test. So, when they ask you how you are, make sure you respond with driven by results or productive thank you. You can show that you're good at delegating responsibility by sending someone else to the interview for you. Note that this works much better for management positions than it does for entry level ones. Your employers will be giving you a thorough background check, so make sure that you replace every picture in your home with framed printouts of Excel documents and keep a PowerPoint running on a loop on your television at all times. Always make sure to make eye contact with your interviewer, and if you have two interviewers, train your eyes to look at both, like a chameleon. If you have three or more interviewers, remember to bring extra eyes. Always smile during your interview. If you don't smile, you run the risk of your interviewers mistaking you for something that can't smile, like a rock or a toaster. In fact, you never know when your interviewers might pop in unannounced, so you're better off just smiling all the time. 
Don't forget to sleep, Smile! Your interviewers are very busy, and it's impolite to waste their time by making them remind you to smile. So just smile all the time. It's easier to push down all of your emotions forever with a smile on your face. If you start to experience something that feels like an emotion, just smile harder until you feel nothing at all. In addition to the vacancies announced earlier, one non-interviewed position has opened up. This position is apparently determined by... How, how do you pronounce this? Election? The interim government will have to have an election for a new postmaster general. I haven't actually heard of this method of choosing an employee before, but I've sent intern Ella down to City Hall to report on a press conference that will be held there soon. More on this later. So while we wait for intern Ella to report back on the press conference, why don't we take a look at the community calendar? On Monday, there will be a swap meet held next to the pit in the center of town. You know, the pit. The one you can hear your loved ones calling out to you from within it, even when they're standing right next to you. Yeah, that's the one! Residents are encouraged to bring any goods that they have no use for to the swap meet, and swap it for something else. Please do not attempt to swap live explosives or your offspring. There will be consequences for any resident attempting either of those things. Tuesday is the scheduled day for Desert Plus annual cactus migration. So from 12.01 Tuesday morning to 11.59 Tuesday night, there is a moratorium on hunting or otherwise harming these cacti as they pass through our town. But outside of those hours, it's fair game. Wednesday is just a normal day. Nothing to see here. Move along. Thursday is Bring Your Children to Work Day. Make sure you get them to their interviews with plenty of time to spare. Any children of working age are required to go to work with you on this day to begin the hiring process. Any children not yet of working age, well, just use your best judgment. The Desert Bluffs branch of the Association of Concerned Parents will be holding a lecture and a Q&A session on fan death this coming Friday. Concerned that your ceiling fan is going to suck all of the air out of your bedroom and kill you? Getting a weird vibe from that oscillating fan your mother-in-law sent as a gift a couple years back? Stop on by and the ACP will happily educate you on the dangers of fan ownership. There will also be a large dumpster provided for attendees to dispose of any fans that they may have foolishly held onto for this long. On Sunday, the American Quarry Club will be holding a rocks and minerals pageant. Trot out your best specimens of sandstone, limestone, quartz, or any other rocks or minerals that you happen to keep. Prizes will be awarded for first, second, and third place in the rocks, minerals, and gemstones categories, as well as an overall best in show award. This has been the Community Calendar. We take you now to live coverage of the press conference being held on the steps of City Hall. Intern Ella, are you there? Ah, uh, well, Paul is indicating to me that we're having some technical difficulties, probably due to the mix of old and new equipment that we're using in this transition period. I can hear Ella just fine using the phone at my desk, so I'll just relay to all of you listening what she is reporting. It seems that an election is a method of determining who gets a position, usually a government or civil service position, by popular vote. Our town charter had very specific instructions about elections, and postmaster general elections, but almost every copy of that charter was destroyed a few years back, in a series of small fires localized to an incinerator at the Strexcorp Hazardous Information Disposal Plant. It seems that one copy has survived, however. A rough draft more than a copy, and it's full of spelling and formatting errors. Also, it looks like someone has spilled something sticky and black onto it, like some sort of tar? But Ella is saying it smells sweetly of flowers. So, the first thing that this recovered charter has to say about elections is that one cannot be held until two candied dates are presented. Is that right? 
dates? That, that's some sort of fruit, I believe. So, the interim government is reaching out to all citizens. If you are in possession of candied dates, or even just regular dates, please contact the interim government immediately. You can do this by voicing any number of incorrect opinions in a public venue or by dialing their hotline. The number for that hotline can be found on the inside of all of the lampshades in your house and also on the interior of the faceplate for any electrical outlet. In addition, if any citizen knows anything about the process of producing candied dates, they are kindly mandated to step forward. Oh, wait, no. Ella is telling me now that the charter did not say candied dates. It said candidates. Now, see, that makes a lot more sense. Whoever wrote this rough draft must have had some less than stellar penmanship, I suppose. So, this development is bringing a new set of challenges in the search for our town's new Postmaster General. I don't think anyone would step forward as a candidate for this job. Working in the post office is incredibly dangerous. A recent study conducted by the interim government census workers determined that postal service workers have the highest mortality rate in our entire town. Although, to be fair, the Postmaster General usually gets away with a light maiming unless something truly serious were to happen. In anticipation of a lack of willing candidates, the interim government has moved to determine candidates by way of lottery. Now, most of the time when we hold a lottery here in Desert Bluffs, it is of a different sort. But I'm positive that the interim government will be able to communicate to our residents that this lottery is to determine postmaster candidates, and as such is quite unlike our usual yearly lottery. All residents are being asked to head to City Hall for the lottery drawing in a few minutes, and when we say asked, we mean ordered. Good luck! While we all patiently wait for the lottery to be drawn, Please enjoy the following public service announcement. The Desert Bluffs Health and Fitness Board would like to share with our sunny populace a public service announcement today about pica, the curious and adorable sounding disorder characterized by an appetite for substances that are not food, such as paper, clay, metal, chalk, ashes, glass, or sand. We at the DBHFB want to let you know that eating sand is not normal nor is it something that should be encouraged or sensationalized through reality television or erotic fanfiction. Especially that last one. We at the Health and Fitness Board find nothing sensual or alluring about the idea of pouring a handful of sand into someone's open mouth, individual grains of white and brown and tan cascading down a glistening pink tongue, past large boulders of flat and sharp and rounded white teeth, what exactly is so seductive about the light catching those tiny particles of mineral and glistening as they careen off of their shirt and collecting in the folds of that soft cotton fabric that you just want to rest your cheek against? The mental image of that sand completely filling and invading their lungs and stomach is not something we here at the Health and Fitness Board find particularly engrossing and pleasing to our desires. The sand finally overflowing out of their mouth and nostrils and spilling out in a waterfall of soft hissing sounds, quickly forming a small dune at the foot of their filled body and covering them inch by inch in their endless flow. We will be providing pamphlets at the next town hall meeting just chock full of helpful tips towards Pika's treatment, as well as our own board members' writings, uh, testimonials, so that those of Pika can know they're not alone. This has been a public service announcement from the Desert Bluffs Health and Fitness Board. Welcome back! It appears that the majority of residents, barring myself and Paul and a few stragglers, have made their way to City Hall for the lottery drawing. Ella is telling me that she's seen quite a few residents have brought armloads of heavy rocks, which she finds concerning. Ella, I really wouldn't worry. They're probably just getting their specimens ready for the upcoming American Quarry Club show. And now, it is finally time for the lottery drawing! Ella is telling me that an interim government spokesperson has begun spinning the oil drum that we converted into a lottery machine. She's also telling me it sounds like some sort of small animal may have taken up residence inside the drum since it was last used. 
In addition to the expected sounds of children's laughter, there seems to be some sort of angry yowling coming from inside of it. And it's done! They are selecting the candidates from the lottery drum. The first candidate is... Lawrence Levine! Lawrence is still apparently making his way towards City Hall from his home in the edge of town development, so the interim government spokesperson is now drawing a second name from the oil drum. The second candidate is... Intern Ella! Oh, how exciting! Ella, are you there? You must be so thrilled! Ella, are you there? Is that happy screaming or the other kind? Listeners, it seems as if Ella has dropped her phone. While I'm sure that everyone down at City Hall is simply celebrating her candidacy, I am a little concerned about some of the noises I'm hearing over the line. I think I'd better run down to City Hall to, uh, congratulate intern Ella. So, while I do that, why don't you all listen to today's climate report? Early when the sleeping pill wakes me, I take a wake up pill to fill with energy. I power on hard and I check my messages, but I don't have any messages. I take a driving pill and head to my car. I drive around a bit because work isn't very far. I call my phone and I check my messages, but I don't have any messages. All I know, driving on drugs feels better when they're prescription. All I know, the world looks beautiful, the world looks so damn beautiful. Fantastic, and I never felt as good as how I do right now. Except for maybe when I think about how I felt that day, when I felt the way that I do right now, right now. I feel fantastic, and I never felt as good as how I do right now. Except for maybe when I think about how I felt that day, when I felt the way that I do right now, right now, right now. Work is anything but quiet these days. I try to mitigate my concentration rates. I can see the day unfold in front of me So I take the stairs and hit the gym The phone is ringing when I get to my desk What was the sting and now a sharp pain in my chest So I take a call the next and just chill And then it's time for lunch again All I know is work is easy When you don't stress out about deadlines All I know is I take my medicine I always take my medicine Fantastic, and I never felt as good as how I do right now. Except for maybe when I think about how I felt that day, when I felt the way that I do right now, right now. I feel fantastic, and I never felt as good as how I do right now. Except for maybe when I think about how I felt that day, when I felt the way that I do right now, right now, right now, right now, right now. I can't stay to work late Gotta leave and get ready for my second date With a pretty girl and a man at the pharmacy Right in the prescription line I take a pill for my social anxiety I get a table and a nice bottle of Chablis Now it's getting late and there's still no sign of her I have another glass of wine All I know is the wine lasts longer When you don't gotta share with someone All I know is the steak tastes better When I take my steak taste better pill Fantastic, and I never felt as good as how I do right now. Except for maybe when I think about how I felt that day, when I felt the way that I do right now, right now. I feel fantastic, and I never felt as good as how I do right now. Except for maybe when I think about how I felt that day, when I felt the way that I do right now, right now, right now. Welcome back, listeners. I have some less than exciting news. It seems that in the midst of celebrating intern Ella's achievement in being named a candidate for the upcoming Postmaster General election, some residents got a little... overexcited. This overenthusiastic celebration resulted in several very promising competitors for the upcoming Rocks and Minerals pageant being disqualified, as well as the untimely death by stoning of intern Ella. To the family of intern Ella, All of us here at the station are heartbroken at this loss. A white van labeled Fun Bus will be by shortly to pick you up. 
Ella was, of course, still under warranty and you are contractually obligated to supply the station with another intern. Please do not attempt to hide from the fun bus. It is very good at what it does. You know, even though we've lost an intern today, I think, as a town, we're starting to move back towards our root and our history. Something that we're going to have to do if we're to Testing, testing, one, two, wait, hello? This, this thing's working? <laughs> wow, uh, uh, okay, uh, it, it, it looks like I won't be able to broadcast for long. Please, if, if anyone is out there, I need help. These people you can call them that, they'll kill me. I know it. I'm starving. I, I don't know what they eat, but I'm out of food. I've boiled all the leather I could find in the station, and I even tried to eat some of the potted plants, but, but I just, I couldn't stand the screaming. Everything here is blood and viscera. My hands are stained red from working the soundboard. I, I, I can't keep doing this. This is usually the part of the show where Terry shares a lesson or a moral. There's today's moral for you. There is none. All of this is terrible and it is pointless. I don't know if anyone will hear this. Everyone here, everyone in Desert Bluffs, they only hear what they want to hear. But if, if someone out there can hear me, if Night Vale can hear me, please, I want to go home. remember this important lesson, lest we allow history to repeat itself. So, with that, I'll leave you with a final thought. Never attribute to malice what can be adequately explained by a complex conspiracy spanning millennia. I'll talk to you soon, Desert Bluffs. Keep smiling! Welcome Back Desert Bluffs is a fan-made podcast based upon characters and locations from Welcome to Night Vale is the intellectual property of Commonplace Books. The voice of Terry is me, Ren Connolly. The voice of Paul is Cody Wolf. This episode's Climate Report was I Feel Fantastic by Jonathan Colton. Information about the Climate Report and other sounds used in this episode can be found in the description below. Got a cool idea? Need a new pen pal? Send us an email at welcomebackdesertbluffs at gmail.com. <laughs>